So I don't let things get me down too much. Or if I, let's say if I make a loss, I'm like, okay, fantastic. So what am I going to learn from this? Mm. Rather than crying about it or, oh my God, I lost some money. I don't care. I don't even care if I lost all my funded accounts tomorrow because I know I could get them again if I needed to. But of course, that's not the plan. I'm not trying to lose my funded account. And welcome back to another TFT interview. Today, I have the pleasure to host Umar, who comes from UK. He got already five payouts from us. So let's hear his story. Hello, Umar. How hey, are you? Hey, how are you doing? <laughs> Good, thanks. How are you? I'm great, thanks. So can you please tell us a little bit about yourself and what got you into trading? Yeah, so um, like you said, my name's Umar. Uh, I've been trading for about just over three years now. Mm -hmm. Um, what got me into trading? So actually, uh, one of my friends was trading a long time before I started, right? And uh, obviously saw the sort of money he was making. So uh, said, this has to be real. Well, first I was like, this has to be fake. But then I saw it was real yeah. when he, he showed me his bank account. So, so I was like, okay, fantastic. Um, and then, yeah, he went on to become a millionaire. So I was just like, well, I need to start something with trading because I'm not working a nine to five anymore or in the near future. So, um, so yeah, that's how I sort of got started and then didn't stop since then. Wow. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your learning curve? Uh, did you join any communities? Did you have mentors? How was the learning process? Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> for, for me, I think I did it the really hard way, like really hard way. Uh, by that, I mean, you know, trial and error, everything was trial and error. So never been part of any communities, um when i say communities i mean any paid communities right um there was a lot of people on instagram and i would not really get sucked into it because for me i used to see it like no these people are just showing you lambos these people are showing you demo accounts you know it didn't entice me to want to join something like that and i think that just resides with because of the sort of person i am generally right like i i see through see through things quite a lot quite easily so I was like yeah I'm not joining this that being said I did follow people of course you know um people in the industry that were well known so for example like Hugh Banks I still follow him to this day like he's definitely legit one of the most legit traders in the industry right uh that being said also Anthony's world as well if you know Anthony he, yeah. he's pretty good so yeah I followed a few people here and there yeah mm -hmm. And uh, did you jump from a strategy to a strategy as many of us <laughs> or yeah. your golden strategy from the start? Yeah, I mean, that's, that was never ending, really. You know, uh, I think when you first start your trading, you don't even know what a strategy is. Mm. Right. You just think, yeah, buy long, sell short and then hope for the best. Right. That's that's <laughs> I think that's the most common strategy when you start your trading, isn't it? Yeah. That's true. Um, yeah. So I'd say, yeah, hope, uh, you know, jumping to different strategies um a lot of the time until i realized that okay you know what we need to get the mindset correct because mm -hmm. the mindset is what is important when you're looking at the markets understanding how the markets work right it's all psychological yeah. um, and many people either don't know this or even if they do know this they're not able to apply that to their trading yeah. And I think once I started doing that, once I started making that shift away from, okay, just looking at a chart and, oh, yeah, this is a support, this is a resistance, now I'll place a trade. Once you realize to shift away from that, because technicals is one part of trading, right? Um, for me, the, the heavy part of trading is the mentality aspect, the mindset, psychological factors, you know? So yeah. once I started focusing more on that, that's what really helped me to excel and, you know, start driving growth in my trading. Hmm. How did how long time did it take you to become profitable? Uh, well, it depends what your definition of profitable is, right? Because like if it's consi consistent, I'd say my sort of um, making point was around mid last year, mid last year, um, where I really started saying like, okay, you know what, I'm actually making money, you know. I know. Um, I, I had some. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I was like, well, this surely has to be correct, you know, like this payout I just got, you know, for example, in the in the summer, I got like over 30k in payouts with a different firm. But I was like, okay, well, I must be doing something right, you know. Yeah. And then um, when TFT came along, for me anyway, like when I found about TFT on Instagram and whatnot, and I was like, I actually like this firm as well. So uh, let's give this one a go, you know. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, we got funded in November. 
and uh, now we've got uh, another 400k added to the 250k. So uh, we're max funded. We're at 650k um, capital trading with TFT. Amazing! Congratulations. <laughs> and how is your experience with us? What do you like the most, and what what would you like us to improve? <laughs> Uh, I, I'll say the good things. I'll say the good things. Um, so I'd I'd say you know like especially having a an audibly ready CEO such as Angelo. Mm-hmm. So he's very you know um, transparent with everything that he does. He's made sure that we've actually built a community out where we can all talk on on a platform on Discord. So I think that's you know one of the key differentiators between other firms already. They don't have real communities like TFT does. Uh, that being said, also, you know, in terms of just the whole process of TFT, how how they've changed a lot of the, the prop from industry. Mm-hmm. And you're able to see all these other firms that are getting exposed now since TFT have really started making noise, you know, uh, obviously won't name any names again. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I'd, I'd say overall is very good. Uh, of course, if I was to give feedback, there are things I could say, but uh, Angela already knows what those are, so I won't say them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can feel free to share them here as well. <laughs> We're transparent. <laughs> okay. Uh, what did you struggle with the most in your trading journey and how did you overcome the struggles? So I'd say the main struggles I had were being able to, again, as mentioned earlier, shift from the mindset of making money mm-hmm. to being able to trade, mm-hmm. you know, and I think that's where most people really, you know, uh, lack the the knowledge to understand what that means. Right. Mm-hmm. So if you're always going to chase money when it comes to trading, probably eight out of 10 times you're going to lose. You're just going to lose because you're chasing money. You then have emotions. You have greed attached to that money. You know, you think you're going to become a millionaire overnight. You think it's a get rich quick scheme. It's not. It's not. Right. Yeah. Um, so once you understand that, OK, I actually need to acquire this skill. I need to learn trading. Once you learn that and I start applying that, that's when you really start to progress in your trading. You know, mm-hmm. so that's why I say to a lot of people, mindset is key. But also don't look at numbers. You know, I have people ask me, oh, how much money did you make? Da, da, da. And I'm like, why Why does it matter how much money I made? Why don't you ask me how many, how much percent I'm up for the month? Why don't we talk percentages? You know, once you start focusing on percentages and risk to reward ratios, you know, that's where your trading improves a lot. You know, I totally agree. And uh, what did you do to improve your psychology and to like shift this mindset? I think... A lot of it came down to, uh, as I mentioned earlier, trial and error. So I had to just go through a lot of hardship, a lot of hardship, not just in trading, but I feel like in life, you know, like you're, I'm a firm believer in your personality and your traits is what dictates you as a trader, you know? Um, So if you're, if you have a gambler's mindset from like by default, then when you're trading, you're going to be gambling, you know, you're going to be trading like a gambler, right? Whereas if you shift away from that and you're like, wait a minute, if I risk 1% to make 2%, you know, this this seems more calculated, you know, uh, trading is a game of probability. Yeah. So once you acquire that knowledge and you're able to really apply that, and also don't get me wrong, like reading books is very important. Yeah. Personally, I'm not so much of a reader, but I have read books when it comes to trading because I said that, you know, once I realize mindset is key, I have to read some books, you yeah. know. So uh, there's a few books I can recommend as well, um, like, uh, you know, a Guide to Trading Psychology by Steve Burns. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that really focuses on your mindset and just just other mindset books in general to really just understand the human brain, you know, because everything is tied to to emotions until you can detach that from the money aspect. Right. So there's a lot that goes into. Mm-hmm. I totally agree. I love reading books. And that's um uh, it kind of even if you if you listen to a book you cannot let, like grasp as much as you can do when you like take the book and you read and you analyze every single mm-hmm. word and you take your time to like uh, reprocess uh, everything that uh, you've learned. Uh, would you like to share your screen with us and show us um, uh, how you approach the chart and uh, yeah maybe show us a trade that you executed? What you see here is my US thirty also known as Dow Jones daily markup. Mm -hmm. Uh, So here, I mean, uh, I didn't actually take this trade per se, but it was a trade that I've, you know, 
forecasted to some people anyway. Um, but here we can see, you know, US 30 had a big, big liquidity grab around here. So what I tend to do usually is I'll have my supply and demand zones marked up, but um, I don't have them here. I've got rid of them just for US 30. But I'm a firm believer in having, you know, your charts looking very simple. Right. So having your your trend lines, um, you know, people will downplay trend lines a lot. Personally, I feel like they're good indicators to just understand your zones and where markets going, where, you know, you can bounce off of where price goes and, and whatnot. Right. Yeah. Um, I also use moving averages uh, just as a sort of uh, part of many confluences, just to really indicate to me uh, on a you know higher time frame. OK, where is the direction heading? Where is the trend of the market really going? So here you can see clearly massive liquidity grab. Look at all of these wicks here. Right. This is a clear indication to me already that, OK, market's going up. And what happened? Market went up and we're still currently at this zone here. So uh, for me, this was perfect buys. Uh, again, I didn't take it. I was sleeping, but it was perfect buys. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a favorite session when you trade? Um, I'd probably say US session. That's usually when there's most volatility for me personally with the trades that I pair, um, or with the pairs that I trade, sorry. Uh, so, so yeah, I say US session. I try to avoid Asia session as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, do you do top-down analysis? Like how do you, or in what time frame do you use to execute trades? Yeah, so I usually go from uh, top to bottom in terms of uh, higher time frame to lower time frame. My entries tend to be on like the five minute or the 15 minute. What? Um, just to, I feel like you get a better sort of sniper entry when you use lower time frames, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that being said, depending on if you're swinging, of course, you can use higher time frames. Um, but for me recently, you know, especially with all the funding I've been getting, I realized that with prop firms, it's best to be a day trader slash scalper mm -hmm. rather than swinging just because of the rules and depending on your trading strategy or rules. So for me, I'm more of a day trader slash scalper. Uh, especially with US 30 as it you know is quite lucrative so yeah yeah and would you like to like drop on a lower time frame and show us an example of where would you execute where would you put your stop loss and target profit yeah so i mean if we even go to the 15 minute here so all right perfect right so well, what MA is that you're using you use 50 200 9 and 800 right yeah i wouldn't pay attention to all of them just because they're for different time frames and for different reasons which I won't go into too much, but uh, yeah, with the with the daily, we saw the 800 um, moving average, which indicated, you know, sort of where the trend is heading if there's a reversal, for example. So we saw that that 800 M uh, MA on the daily was right where the liquidity grab was, where all of the wicks were forming. Mm -hmm. So that's where the 800 usually used. Um, but here, so let's say on the 15 minute time frame, we can see, you know, where price is not breaking basically down here. So we can see we've got one touch, two touch, three touch. I mean, we can count this as four, but for the major touches, one, two, three, right? And the similar levels. Yeah. So from here, it would indicate to me, especially with the news that's been going on, that we're only going to go up from here. So here would be a perfect buy. This is where I would have probably taken a buy. Not so much here, just because there can be some more uh, movement to the downside. But I'd say around this point here, 31.5, 31.5, I'd probably take a, take a yeah. buy around here. That would have been a perfect trade for me and uh, where would you place the stop loss in your target profit so stop loss for me personally depending on you know uh, how much risk i'm playing like i said i play with percentages i don't really count okay this is how many pips i need to have a stop loss it's just percentage wise right mm -hmm. um, and for that just for people that aren't aware of how to really manage their risk if they need help with that uh, just use a simple lot size calculator right you can go on babypips.com it's free and it will work out your risk uh, percentage that you need, how many stop loss, uh, how much stop loss, how much take profit for you to achieve your re uh, risk to return ratio. Mm. And do you have any specific rule for like um, risk to reward that you are sticking to or you're like, um, it depends on the setup you have? Yeah, it, so it, it does depend on the setup. But as a general principle, I try to not risk more than one to 1.5% 1 of my capital. Uh, for a you know minimum two to three percent gain that's usually my target mm -hmm. um but that being said if i'm seeing there's a lot of volatility and you know i'm looking to really scalp for that day uh then it would be a bit a bit of a tighter stop loss of course with similar risk um, and then just close out 
when when I'm happy with uh, you know one percent, one point five percent, and just compound that in a day. So I could be up like three percent in a day just from scalping. You know? And do you take partials? Um, not on US thirty. Uh, usually, so the two pairs I actually trade are US thirty and GBP AUD. Uh, when I'm trading GBP AUD, like it's one of my most favorite pairs ever. I mean, I've been trading it for over two years, whereas US 30, I've only been trading it for about a year, let's say, or actually started studying it a year ago. Mm -hmm. um, so with GBP AUD, yeah, I take partials, but then I, I tend to scale in a lot with GBP AUD because of the way it moves. Mm -hmm. um, it tends to move at least anywhere from 150 to 200 pips when there's nice moves. So it's easy to just scale in with those sort of those movements there. Mm -hmm. And do you manage the trade actively or you just put uh, limits and you walk away? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, so I think it depends how busy I am, right? Um, I would not like to be glued to a screen all the time. Mm -hmm. That being said, of course, if it's a very volatile week, such as last week or the week before with NFP, and then, you know, even this week, we've got some news coming tomorrow, mm -hmm. um, I'll actively monitor it uh, as much as I can. Uh, that being said, I'm not obsessed with it. Like, I can just leave it alone and just go do something, right? I still have my risk in place. Um, but, uh, yeah, if I'm, you know, if I'm more chilled and let's say I'm more comfortable with where the account is, so let's say I'm in a decent profit on that account, right, then I'll place, trade, manage my risk and just let it ride how it needs to go. Yeah. And um, uh, some questions about the um, moving averages, like, do you wait for crossing and something like, like, um, how do you combine um, your analysis with the moving averages that you use? Yeah, so, so it really depends, like on the higher time frames, you know, if there is a, a cross, because this, this sort of plays into more like of divergence as well, it plays with it, right? Um, but it really just depends, uh, without going into too much detail, like, yeah, the, the MAs, um, could be crossing or if, if I just see that, you know, it's dipped within a certain range that's been followed for some time, that's also an indicator to me where I'm like, okay, well, prices come here multiple times. So we more than likely with probability expect price to be going up or, you know, going down, but in this case, going up with US 30 that you see. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any daily routine that you're sticking to and uh, do you have any like practices like for mindfulness techniques that you use to kind of like refocus and uh, improve your psychology? Yeah, good question. Um, I think in terms of daily habits, first of all, you need to, you know, not every day is going to be a good day. Uh, you know, for, for for us as humans, human beings, human nature, right? Yeah. But you need to always have a mindset when you wake up that, you know, however I feel today, I'm going to put in some work, whether it is with trading, whether it is with just going for a walk or, you know, whether it's helping somebody, you're going to do something meaningful today, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm a firm believer in that, that you need to do something meaningful with your life and not just have an impact on yourself, but more importantly, have an impact on others, right? Because if you can motivate other people, inspire other people, then it's a good feeling for me personally. And, you know, over the last uh, six months, I've had a lot of people start messaging me that I'm motivating, I'm inspiring them. And then it, it motivates me more, right? It makes me want to go harder because I'm like, well, clearly something I'm doing is right. So let me carry on. Let me keep building on this. You know, um, that's in terms of just daily habits. Uh, I don't have anything specific like, oh, yeah, I go to the gym, all of this stuff. I used to go to the gym, which is something I need to implement again. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course, you know, trading can be exhausting as well amongst balancing the things in life. Mm -hmm. um, and then to your second question, it was around mindfulness. How yeah. to train your train your mind? Yeah, so I think I think that's a very very uh, subjective question because it depends on you as an individual, as I mentioned earlier. So for me, I've always had a sort of mindset where you know um, I don't care too much, and I'm like, as long as I'm learning, that's all I care about. Mm -hmm. So I don't let things get me down too much. Or if I let's say if I make a loss, I'm like, okay, fantastic. So what am I going to learn from this? Mm -hmm. Rather than crying about it or oh my god, I lost some money. I don't care. I don't care. I don't even care if I lost all my funded accounts tomorrow because I know I could get them again if I needed to. But of course, that's not the plan. I'm not trying to lose my funded <laughs> account. I've got 650k funding for a reason of TFT, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, you take it slow and steady. Take it one one step at a time. But um, I think main thing with with mindfulness is you need to be accountable. You need to be self aware. Yeah. Um, without these things, honestly, you're not gonna go far in life, and that's just the truth. No, um, I've seen a lot in life already in and out of the trading world. And I'd say without accountability, 
uh, without responsibility, you're not doing much and you were not going to make it in trading. That's that's for sure. That's for sure. Um, you know, that's one thing I think most traders lack is accountability. Mm. You know, one loss messes them up for a week. You know, I make a loss uh, 10 minutes later. I'm like, oh, that's nice. You know, mm-hmm. so just keep it moving. That's it. That's what yeah. you do. What are your goals uh, with trading and in life in general? So with like, trading... You yourself in five years? Ooh, five years. I haven't thought about five. Well, but, um, <laughs> yeah. a couple of years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, th- I think for me, so goal of trading, of course, is to... Uh, get so that the the initial goal for this year when i started this year out right was i want to get 1 million in funding by end of the year mm. i'm already base i'm a 950k funded overall with all prop firms as it stands and we're in march so so i think yeah so i think i need to change the goal a little bit maybe 2 million funding i don't know right mm-hmm. um but also for me is to keep making sure that i'm consistent every month every month and i don't aim for high percentages this is another thing where traders use lose their account whether it's a funded account or their personal account they blow their account why they don't manage risk they're not disciplined discipline is key right so if you aim for high percentages every month, you're not trading, you're gambling, you're gambling, you know, unless you have a system in place where you're genuinely just making high percentage returns in one month. You're not going to have that every month. You know, mm-hmm. you will never find a real trader who's making 20 percent, 50 percent a month unless it's, you know, I don't know, someone like QBanks, for example. Yeah. yeah. But aiming for anywhere from three, three to five percent for me a month, I'm more than happy with. Think about that on a on a million dollars of funding. How much is right? More than enough. <laughs> there you go. You know, you're, you're making a yearly salary um, in a month. Yeah. So for me, I say less is more. And what do I mean by that? Right? Is that don't get greedy. Yeah. Do not look at the money. Do not chase the money. The money will come. I used to chase the money and I would lose my money. I stopped chasing the money. Now I'm making yeah, they money. They are coming. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So it's all about mindset. Mm, I totally agree. And what was your biggest payout? Uh, So biggest payout with TFT or all prop funds? I mean, bot. Okay. So uh, last year I had uh, just like a single payout, or you mean overall? Yeah, a single payout. A single payout. The biggest one I had was over 20K. 20K. That was last year. Um, with TFT, with the 200K account that got scaled to 250, mm-hmm. I was challenging myself to just keep the account, be consistent, make small percentage gains. So I think I'm sitting at about nearly 15% on that account. Mm-hmm. So what's that? That's about nearly 30K in payouts already with TFT, right? Um, So that's where we are with that. And of course, now we have the 400K. So uh, in a couple of months, I'll update you (laughs) and what that's looking like. Um, So yeah, because my my plan is not to treat every account the same in terms of, um, you know, if I'm being very conservative or aggressive, right? Mm -hmm. So I want to have at least one aggressive account, Mm -hmm. which I'm still debating if that should be the 400K because... To be honest, I could make 5% on the 400k and be a happy man monthly. Mm. So maybe not be too aggressive, but still it's up for debate. I'm deciding what I want to do. Um, but yeah, that's sort of how how I approach things. Mm. Interesting. What advice would you give to trade that to yeah, traders that are just getting started? Honestly, one thing that I, I'm not gonna call it a, a regret, but one thing that could have probably saved me some time, although everyone's journey is different, of course. My journey is different, your journey is different, right? I would say get a real mentor and yes i know there's so many mentors around all these fake gurus showing you fake profits demo accounts hired lambos all of this rubbish right but really try to find a real mentor you know someone that will help you nobody is going to be able to teach you completely how to trade right there's no blueprint to trading what somebody can do is try to help adapt your knowledge and apply their knowledge to yourself for you to formulate your own trading style eventually. That's what I did, but I had to do it by myself, right? I had to do it through information I saw online or trial and error, all the hardships, right? That's only going to make you a better trader. So if you can get a real mentor that can help guide you, then you're already saving yourself a lot of time and money in the long run. You know, like I'll give you a perfect example. I have so many people that come to me, oh, I blew five challenges. I'm thinking, God damn, like five challenges. Why, Why don't you just find some education first? You know, you're, you're basically gambling. You think your funded account is going to change your life. No, it won't. Because first of all, if you're going to fail a challenge, you're never going to get funded. 
-hmm. And even a small percent percentage do become funded, even though they can't trade, right? Even then, they're not going to get their first payout, yeah. you know? So, so long term, you need to understand, like, you want longevity in this game, educate yourself. People pay, you know, 30 grand, 50 grand to go to university to work a nine to five, mm -hmm. which daily is minimum wage if you actually calculate it, right? I know this myself and I have a master's. Right. So I'd say invest in your education, stop buying challenges if you can't trade, stop, you know, trading uh, all your savings if you can't trade. Mm -hmm. um, it starts somewhere. So always start, you know, but don't give up and try and get a real mentor unless you know you're capable of yourself to really learn. Because most people give up and there's a reason why. Right. Yeah. It's not easy. <laughs> oh, indeed. <laughs> Any last words that you would like to share with us? Um, no, just, uh, you know, thank you for the interview. It's been a pleasure with you, Anna. Um, and also, you know, a big shout out to Angelo. He's doing good things. Um, you know, hopefully we get on a, a podcast sometime this year in Dubai. I've said to him already, let's make it happen. So so let's see if it, if it, if it does happen. I think that will be a good one uh, for the people. And yeah, just, you know, just everyone just keep keep going, keep focusing, don't give up and just remember there is there is a light at the end of the tunnel if you stick to uh, not giving up, right? Mm. So, so, yeah. Well said. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for being here and sharing your experience with, with us. It's been a pleasure to host you. And Thank hope you. to have a follow-up uh, in the near future with bigger payouts Thank and scaling you. up. <laughs> with that 400K, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's all from today's interview. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell and show us some love in the comments down below. Happy trading and until next time.